Hi there. Arthur Kessler once said that true creativity often starts where language ends. I agree with him on that. And today, I'm going to share with you how to make an elegant cornice board very easily. And you can understand it, duplicate it, and add your creativity to it. I'm going to discuss the measurements you need, the materials you need to construct it, and also the construction process itself along with rationale so that you understand why you're doing what you're doing. And then I'm going to show you two examples. One, a padded and covered cornice board with material, and one uh, finished with paint. Let's get started. Every window has a frame. You're going to measure from outside frame to outside frame. You're going to add eight inches, which is four inches on each side. That will make piece one. When you go to the lumber yard, you're going to purchase a one by 12 board. What that is, is one inch thick and 12 inches from top to bottom. That's a one by 12. To this initial measurement plus eight, which is piece one, you're going to need two more pieces, two six inch pieces that causes the cornice board to protrude from the wall. We call that piece two. Piece three are your uh, support pieces. They're three inches wide, piece three. Now, if you don't have access to a rotary saw to cut the board once you bring it home, while you're at the lumber yard, ask someone who works there to cut it for you. They're more than happy to oblige if you bought the board there. Do not take the board back later and embarrass yourself by asking them to cut it for you. Okay. Now, piece one serves as the face board. Once your boards are cut, what you're going to do is take two of these piece twos and place each one at each end behind the face board, not next to it, okay? You're going to drill pilot holes with a, a, a screw bit that is one and a half to two inches long at two inches from the top, six inches and 10 inches on each side, okay? That serves as a guide for your screws so that you don't uh, break your lumber and split it and, and waste money and time and frustration too. Save yourself some of that. Once you've mounted your, your piece three, just next to the outside frame, either higher or lower, according to your preference, some people like the corn sports higher, some lower, mount them at one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom. Do yourself a favor and mount your curtain hardware now if you intend to use curtains because once the cornice board is up and mounted, it will be very difficult to mount your curtain hardware. Once you have finished your cornice board, you mount it alongside your support piece on the outside. Again, at 2, 6, and 10, you drill your pilot holes and then using a ratchet screwdriver as you did in construction, uh, save yourself time and energy and drive your screws in with the ratchet screwdriver. That's all there is to making a cornice board. Now I want to show you two examples. The first is padded and covered in material. The material is cut three inches over the top and three over the bottom. It's pulled over, folded, and here I've used upholstery tacks to tack it down. Your padding is just one inch foam along the face board. You don't have to pull it over the top or the bottom. That is your covered example. Now, for the painted example, what I've used is chalkboard paint in the middle, but first I put rope along the bottom and the top, a larger one on the bottom, and then on the inside, a smaller one. I use black chalkboard paint here. Now you're gonna put it on using a regular hot glue gun. Very simple, very, very simple and very elegant. Please stop by Doc Sharing and pick up your handout so that if there's anything you didn't understand, it can be clarified. In line with Kessler, get creative where this speech ends, and hey, have fun with it.